Coming up on Torrance today, elected officials from your district want to hear from you. Former Mayor Patrick Fury returns to council chambers for the first time since leaving office. And college night returns to El Camino College. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, November 9th. I hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Here is our first story. City of Torrance elected officials are hosting community meetings in their districts. It's an opportunity for them to join with city staff and provide updates to the communities they serve. It's also a great way for residents and business owners to ask questions and have their voices heard. District 1 Council Member John Kaji will hold a meeting tomorrow with the Torrance Police Department at the 4301 block of 176th Street from 6 to 7.30 p.m. District 3 Council Member Assam Sheikh will meet with community members on Wednesday, November 30th at the George Nakano Theater. And District 4 Council Member Sharon Kalani will hold two meetings first on Monday, November 21st from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at the Rubin or Daz Community Center and on Tuesday, December 13th from 4.30 to 6 at the Bartlett Senior Center. Districts 2 and 5 already held their in-person meetings, but constituents can reach out to council members Bridget Lewis and Aurelio Matucci at any time. You can visit the city's website for the best contact information. And District 6 Council Member Mike Griffiths looks forward to scheduling his meeting soon. For more information, visit torrentca.gov. We're continuing to honor our local veterans all week long. City Cable made a special video as part of the Military Veterans Appreciation Week here in Torrance. My father-in-law was a career Air Force veteran. And so I met my wife in, in uh, Riverside because he was at March Air Force Base. And I got to know him well. He's departed, but he, he really contributed to this country as an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. And I was, I was drafted to serve in the Vietnam War, but I've had asthma and hay fever, so they made me 4F. That's the worst grade I've ever gotten. But anyway, so I couldn't personally serve in, in the service at all. So I, I really respect and thank my father-in-law for all he contributed and all the other veterans. I really do appreciate all the, the sacrifices that the veterans have made for our country. Uh, it's meant a lot to me. I never served it and I was uh, kind of sorry I never did. Um, I realize that they get to learn so much and I'm really grateful for all the stuff they've done for us uh, to make it better for us living in the United States. You can watch the full virtual program on City Cable at 6.30 p.m. It's also online right now on the city's Facebook and YouTube pages. And if you want to do something to help preserve memories of our veterans, the Torrance Historical Society is looking for volunteers. They're hoping more people can help put a face to each of the nearly 150 names that are on the wall of the Torrance Veterans Memorial Plaza. Every name reminds us of a precious life lost from World War I, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so forth. The organization passed its halfway goal of putting a face to each name and creating a unique story for every individual. If you would like to help, contact the museum at 310-328-5392. Among our local veterans is former Mayor Patrick Fury, who returned to council chambers for the first time since leaving office and becoming the president of the Torrance Education Foundation. Thank you, Mayor Chen and, and members of council for acknowledging the Torrance Education Foundation and, and proclaiming November as Torrance Education Foundation Month in the city of Torrance. This is the month we start our campaign. And the campaign is to raise funds 
to enrich the educational experience of the children of the Torrance Unified School District. I am so honored to be the chair or president of the foundation this year. This year, our emphasis is going to be on the arts program. Uh, and we're looking to enhance an arts program for the pre-K through second grade level, as well as the middle school students, uh, along with all the other things that we uh, provide funding for. But thank you again, Mayor Chen. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody who's listening, everybody in here. And I ask you, please, support the Torrance Education Foundation. It's an investment in our future. Fury also shared last night that the foundation raised nearly $210,000 at a recent fundraising walk. The Torrance Education Foundation is an independent nonprofit that has been around since the early 1990s. Since then, its investors and partners help promote academic excellence for pre-K through 12 graders at TUSD schools, recognize outstanding teachers, staff, and other contributors to education, and develop strategic alliances with businesses, parents, and other members of the community. The Torrance City Council covered many more agenda items last night. Resolutions were read honoring six police officers retiring from the Torrance Police Department after decades of service. Council members accepted and filed the Downtown Torrance Association update and approved funding to establish a downtown business improvement district. And the city leaders also approved amendments to Measure R, funding agreements with the L.A. County Metropolitan Transportation Authority, allowing the Public Works Department to continue its major projects, improving roadways throughout the city. You can catch replays of the entire City Council meeting here on our channel, online, and on the city's YouTube and Facebook platforms. Well, speaking of those projects, a major intersection improvement project in South Torrance is almost complete. We're in the final stages of the project now. We still have some minor concrete um, sidewalk, driveways, and curb work, as well as uh, the final striping and the final landscaping um, plans. This intersection is one of the busiest in the city, so this project is hopefully going to improve um, traffic flow. This project involves ADA improvements, traffic signal improvements, as well as some landscape modifications. We are Fortunately, ahead of schedule, so we will be finishing by Thanksgiving and have all of the the cones and everything, all the lane closures off the road by Thanksgiving. So it it has been a significant impact to the public. We do appreciate everybody's patience throughout this whole process. This will be a really significant, um, successful project when it's finished. The road widening project began last year in August, and this is a big milestone for the city and for our public works department. When fully complete, drivers can enjoy an enhanced intersection with additional turn lanes, better pedestrian amenities, and a more beautiful landscape. If you want to grab a bite while supporting a great cause, head on over to Chipotle after the show. The Torrance Rose Float Association is holding another Restaurants for Roses fundraising event. The latest one just started at 4 at the Chipotle on Hawthorne Boulevard, just outside the Delamo Fashion Center. And it goes on until 8 p.m. Take a flyer when you go, and 33% of your purchase will go towards the nonprofit, helping with our city's participation in the Tournament of Roses Parade. This Chipotle location is at 21300 Hawthorne Boulevard, Suite A, right next to the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. You can also place online orders using a special code from the flyer as well. Just go to torrentsrosefloat.org slash restaurant dash four dash roses to get a copy of that flyer. College night is back at El Camino. It's a way for us to welcome potential students, new students that will be coming into the college to show community members and parents the programs and services that we offer at the college. It's just our way of welcoming the community onto our campus. That's Dr. Thames last year when ECC hosted one of its first 
in-person events since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. The tradition continues this year with an open house between 5 and 7.30 p.m. The college prepared a variety of workshops, a resource fair, and even Twilight Campus tours for those who attend. Thames reminds everyone that prospective students can learn how to access free college fees, for up to two years with the South Bay Promise. Join English as a second language information session and explore career education and training. Visitors can park in Lot C for free. It's located on Manhattan Beach Boulevard and La Moly Avenue. Just make sure to check in at the west entrance of the Student Services Building, which is directly across from that parking lot. ECC also encourages those with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. It is not too late to register. Just go to elcamino.edu slash college night. Well, still ahead, it is Wellness Wednesday, and I'll share a new spot I discovered that has healthy food options with a Mediterranean slash Lebanese flair when we come back in 60 seconds. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to team proof your home. First step, hide the car keys, preferably somewhere they would never look. Did that go okay? You have to provide an outlet for their creative expression. <laughs> So good. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. I'm ready for them. Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> At the end of every episode of Torrance Today, we want to share a positive story that fits the theme for the day. On this Wellness Wednesday, I want to introduce you to a healthy food spot I discovered for my latest Common Sense feature. This delightful cafe brought to you by a family with roots in Lebanon that does share a building with fast food chain Wendy's labels itself as a crossroads between good food, kind people, and happy memories. We had been wanting to start a cafe for a while. These were family recipes that we had been, you know, just enjoying all our lives. And it's all just family meals. We hope that you feel that when you come in and enjoy the food. You can watch my complete Common Sense story tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. and again at 8.30 p.m. Calf and Chick is located at 2404 Sepulveda Boulevard. It proves that you don't have to sacrifice quality for affordability and provides us all with a healthy food option even when we're running out of time. The family-owned cafe opened during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic in December 2020, and we are so happy to see it thriving despite the obstacles. Well, that is our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us at torrentstoday at torrentca.gov. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.